Psychological Operations, otherwise known as PSYOPs, are operations to convey selected information and indicators to audiences to influence their emotions, motives, and objective reasoning, and ultimately the behavior of governments, organizations, groups, and individuals. Has anybody taken a look at Christianity in America today? <laughs> Devil's gonna do what? Ah! Shaba! 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 <laughs> you see what we do? Come on! The devil's gonna... What did he say? The devil what? Shakababa. Ah! Shakababa, 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 Whoa, Shakababa, 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 Ha 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 you wonder why you can't get your head above water you wonder why you don't have joy you wonder why you deal with greed you wonder why you all get messed up with envy you wonder you wonder you wonder it's all about the money it's all about the money. You don't get it. I can believe God as long as I want to. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. I'm going to walk and stand over there. And the Son of God is going to come and stand right here. I give him the service. And you come and lift your hands before him and ask him to touch you. As you approach this area right here. Receive the fire. Yeah, hallelujah. Fire, fire. Stretch your hands, guys, to this circle here. If you're in this circle right here, there's just fire on you. There's fire on you right now. We just release the heat of God, the fire of God. Hallelujah. Whoa, that's power. Power, 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 power. Watch this, this is gonna be so cool. I'm gonna pray and Jesus is gonna grow his leg out. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Left leg grow. Right now. Thank you, God. Let me hold your legs. In Jesus' name, left leg, I command you to come out right now. You feel your leg stretching? You feel something funky in there? Stand up and check your back. I now, the question is, if you're living in the tribulation period and you take this mark, in other words, you identify with the beast's empire, will you still be able to be redeemed? And I think the answer to that is yes. The same people that bring you Alex Jones or the liberals or the mainstream media, these are the same people that bring you the modern church. 
And until you really understand this, you will never be able to see the world within in the true light that it, it really is in. You will never have the right glasses on until you see that there's one power behind all of this. And it is the power of the, the true enemy of your king and your creator. Who's the biggest failure in the Bible? God is. You're a small remnant. And if you've been chosen to see the truth, it's because the Almighty Father loves you. He, bless, he has blessed you, not with monetary gifts. He's blessed you with something far greater. He's blessed you with the truth. If you trust in, believe in anything, anything, other than the gospel that, that saves, the gospel of your salvation that was given to our apostle Paul, the mystery gospel, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, then you are not saved. I know, as soon as I say that, there's people out there right now, they're saying, you're not the judge, God's the judge, and you don't know, and you don't know my heart. Well, I do know what the Bible says, and the Bible says the gospel of your salvation, for this dispensation that we're in, the dispensation of the grace of God, for this side of the cross, for everyone, is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Let's break it down. I'm going to read this right out of the King James Bible. Moreover, brethren, this is Paul speaking, I declare unto you the gospel, the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Now he's talking to save Corinthians. This is the gospel. He preached to them. This is for everybody for this side of the cross. By which also ye are saved. That's verse 2. By which also ye are saved, folks. That is how you're saved. This gospel, the gospel that Paul preached, the gospel that saved, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. There's people that will argue that one and say, well, that's because if you don't, you know, if you've forgotten it or what. No, it's nothing to do with that. It means if Christ really didn't raise himself from the dead, if he didn't really resurrect on our behalf, then we've believed in vain. That's what he's telling them there. Verse 3, for I delivered unto you, now this is again Apostle Paul, I delivered unto you first of all, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So he delivered it first of all. Remember that. This gospel that saves for this side of the cross for all, everyone, no more Jew, no more Greek, no more male, female, bond or free, this is for all this side of the cross, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, folks, that saved. You see the words there mean something. Words mean something, folks. We can't just gloss over them. You cannot believe when people like Todd White tell you, oh, Jesus loves you and you're awesome. And he just loves everybody. And we just got to go spread that love and be on fire for, for Jesus out there and, and everything else. No, what we need to do is to see all men saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2 verse 4. That is God's will. We are to Ephesians 3, 9, make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. And you heard Paul right there, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Folks, this takes rightly dividing the word of truth in order to do this. 2 Timothy 2, 15. If you've listened to us in the past, you know we say this over and over again. I declare unto you the gospel, wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. It doesn't get any simpler than that, folks. Now, when you go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it pretty much accompanies this here. What did Paul saying in Ephesians 1, verse 13? This seals the deal, folks. Once you hear that gospel and believe it and trust in it, this is where you get sealed right here. No one can take it away. Ephesians 1, verse 13, in whom ye also trusted, after that, you heard the word of truth, so you hear it, you're trusting it, 
The gospel of your salvation. There it is again. The gospel of your salvation. It's no sinner's prayer. It's no any kind of prayer you can do. It's no kind of work that you can do. There's nothing you or I can do in order to get saved other than hearing the gospel that saves and believing in it. The gospel of your salvation. He says here, in whom also after that ye believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's key, folks. Do you believe it or do you not believe it? If you believe it, that's what you trust in for salvation. The forgiveness was offered by the finished cross work. A lot of people mistake forgiveness and salvation for the same thing. They sound different because they are different. Forgiveness was offered by by the finished cross work, what Jesus did, the death burial, and of course the resurrection. Without that resurrection, nobody gets saved. You hear that preached, you believe it, and then you are saved and sealed by the Holy Spirit. End of story.